Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Public Cloud Design Tips and Tricks. In this channel, we generally discuss about public cloud design problem statement and their related solution. Today, we are going to discuss about Azure Purview. So today's problem statement, how to realize single pen data governance model for hybrid, multi-cloud and SaaS based infrastructure. To realize this, Microsoft, has, uh, Microsoft Azure has provided a solution, Azure Purview. So what is data governance? Data governance ensures that data is consistent and trustworthy and doesn't get misused across your organization. Without effective data governance, data inconsistencies in different systems across an organization might not get resolved. Let's think about a simple scenario. You have a customer name known as Nirmada Mishra and there are three different domains like sales, logistics, customer service, where the customer name is going to be stored in different formats like N Mishra, Nil Mishra or Nil Madhav Mishra. Then when you want to aggregate this data, then it, it is very difficult to aggregate the data with respect to the main name. In that case, it creates an inconsistency across different domains. To resolve this, there should be a governance model which should be there, which will define, okay, when you want to store a name, this is the format that you have to follow. That is the basic fundamental of data governance model. Uh, it does more than that as well, but uh, when we are looking into the Microsoft Azure purview, then uh, you know this is the solution which has been provided to uh, do the data governance across your uh, on-premise or your Azure native services or multi-cloud services like AWS or Google Cloud. So with the single pane of, of uh, portal, you can govern your data irrespective of its current location whether it is an on-premise, other cloud or Azure cloud services. That is the power of Azure purview. So what is Azure purview? It is nothing but a unified data governance service that helps you to manage and govern your on-premise, multi-cloud and software Azure service data. It also helps you to easily create a holistic, up-to-date map of your data landscape with authenticated data discovery, sensitive data classification and end-to-end -end data uh, lineage. When you are talking about sensitive data classification, you can define certain rules inside your uh, purview where you can find it out what are all different sensitive data and what is the current location and who are all users that they are you know using it. So holistic view of data you can get, you can get it via the Azure Purview portal. It also empowers you to data consumers to find valuable, trustworthy data. This is a continuation of Azure Data Catalog and available for public re uh, uh, preview. Now let's try to realize what are the different components of Azure Purview. So there are four components which is available with Purview. One is data map, second is data catalog, third is data state insights and data sharing. Data, max, data map uh, makes your uh, data meaningful by graphing your data assets and their relationships across your data estate. So if your data has different relationship with different other data systems, then you can find it out, uh, find it out a graphical view in the uh, Azure Purview portal. And also the data map used to discover data and manage access to that data as well. You can manage the access, who can access it, who where can access it, what are all different permission label that should be there. These are all different rules that you can apply. Then data catalog. Data catalog finds trusted data sources by browsing and searching your data assets. The data catalog aligns your assets with friendly business terms and data classification to identify data sources. So you can identify data sources via the data catalog. And data estate insights is nothing but gives you an overview of your data estate to help you discover what kinds of data you have and where exactly it is currently stored. The last one is data sharing which allows you to securely share data internally or across organization with business partner and customer. So you can uh, you know, share the data within your organization, outside your organization by the data sharing capabilities. Now let's try to un understand when you are creating a purview that what are all different checklists which will be needed. So when you are creating a purview that time, that time uh, Azure service, uh, Azure storage and Azure event hubs which is uh, you know managed by uh, Microsoft Azure will be created automatically. And Azure storage is being used to store the metadata of different data sources as where you can do some analytics activities or governance activities. And also it helps you to store your purview log data as well. Whereas Azure event hub is uh, created when you are creating or you are deploying your Azure purview, a managed event hub is getting created as part of your purview account creation. So when you are creating the account itself of purview, the Azure event hub is getting created. You can trigger a workflow outside Azure purview when new data is scanned. That means when you are scanning a new data, that time a workflow can be created and the workflow will uh, you know, trigger uh, certain other APIs 
to fetch and uh, to do the respective storage activities or kind of governance activities. So that is the basic uses of Azure Event Ops along with a combination of Azure Purview. Now let's try to understand what are all different uh, network topologies. So when you are creating the purviews, then there are two aspects. One is inbound connectivity, second is outbound connectivity. So when uh, as the purview is a pass service, so it sits in Azure public area. So there are four connectivity patterns that you can follow. One is public endpoints, second is private endpoints. It's a combination of uh, public and private also can be realized. And, and another is you also can restrict uh, your Azure uh, purview firewall, that means pass firewall. Public endpoints when you are using, that means uh, it, it can be a Azure service endpoint. In that time, the traffic will go via the internet route. So it will be exposed to the internet route. But when you are using private endpoint, that means your uh, your traffic will always remain in, within your organization network. That means privately it will connect uh, from source to your Azure purview. And when you are uh, you know using both private as well as public, that also you can balance it based on the Azure firewalls. That means in the Azure firewall, Azure uh, uh, as your purview firewall, that means the pass firewall, you can also restrict which are, which are all different endpoints can reach your database or your purview service and which are all uh, uh, endpoints cannot reach it. So you can filter it out in the firewall level of Azure purview. It's an internal firewall to Azure purview. Now let's think about the Azure outbound connectivity. So when we are talking about outbound connectivity, then it can be done via the integration runtime. So if you want to connect securely to your private network uh, data sources, like if you have an ES uh, service where inside a virtual machine you are having a SQL database and you want to connect it from the Azure purview, then you can connect it via the integration runtime. There are two types of integration runtime which Azure purview supports. One is self-hosted integration runtime, second is purview managed integration runtime. When you are using self-hosted integration runtime, that time you will provision your virtual machine inside a virtual network and you have to own that particular virtual machine and you have to install your uh, integration runtime inside that virtual machine. So you have to do the patch management, all the ES related uh, you know, activities that you have to take care. Whereas if you use the purview managed integration runtime, that time uh, Microsoft will take care of your, you know, your integration runtime, the virtual machine and everything will be managed by my Microsoft, but the location is not under your control. That is under the control of Microsoft. That means, uh, you know, uh, the network, the private network, which will be configured, which will be outside your own uh, virtual network. Okay. That is what the managed integration runtime means. But there, uh, you know, Microsoft will take care of everything. You do not have to think how to install a integration runtime rather than Microsoft will, does it, uh, will do it for you. Now let's try to understand the network security. There are three network security patterns which is currently followed. One is end-to-end -end network isolation, pass firewall and NSD rules. When we are talking about end-to-end -end network uh, isolation, that means you want to isolate your network uh, privately so that you know no one else can reach your purview. In that case, you can use the private endpoint. So as you can see here, in, in via the private endpoint, you can reach your purview and the purview will, although it's a pass service, it will behave like it's in, it, it is residing inside your virtual network. So that via the NSD rules and uh, network security groups, you can restrict which are all the sources can reach your purview and which are all service, uh, sources your purview can also reach to. And if you want to connect outbound connectivity, then you can install it via your self-hosted integration runtime inside your virtual network. And via the NSD role, you can restrict what, what are all different destination that is allowed from your self-hosted integration runtime. So this is how you can realize a network isolation within your uh, private network or, uh, you know, uh, to reach different data sources. Uh, as you can see here, this is a simple HubSpoke model where you have your ES data sources, which is in another virtual network. And you have your purview, which is sitting in an, uh, another virtual network, and they want to interact with each other. They can directly interact with each other via the uh, network peering, or they can go via the hub network where you have your appliances, which is stored inside the hub network, which will allow your purview to interact with outside world, like on-premise, or which will uh, allow your purview to also go outside your uh, virtual network to internet and all. So via the Azure firewall also, you can restrict. So this is the simple flow of a network security where you can control the network uh, traffic to your Azure purview. Now, uh, the fundamentals of Azure purview when we are talking about uh, uh, is the authentication and authorization. So uh, before we uh, jump into that part, let's try to realize this uh, fundamentals of Azure purview. So here, what is happening? Uh, let's think about a scenario you have your on-premise system and you want to reach out to your purview and you have your on-premise databases as well so in that case you can have your self-hosted integration runtime in your on-premise as well 
or in your uh, uh, Azure subscription as well. When you are having your on-premise uh, virtual network, uh, on-premise self-hosted integration runtime, when there is a scan which will be initiated by your Azure purview, then your self-hosted integration runtime will connect to your on-premise data sources and also will connect to your purview via the uh, you know private endpoint so that the network traffic will remain in, inside your control via the express route and you can reach out to your on-premise system or your uh, Azure native services. So your Azure purview will be able to interact with your native services as well as to your on-premise system. This is a simple holistic view and if you are the user uh, like you want to uh, view the portal of Azure Pearl View, the, 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 uh, the admin portal of Azure Pearl View, then you can view it via the private endpoint uh, being in your network of uh, your, your organization, your private organization, okay. So you can use the private endpoint to reach out to Pearl View. And also, your, you know, if you are installing the Azure uh, self-hosted integration runtime, then it will be automatically uh, do the uh, auto update and auto patching activities with the Microsoft download uh, software. So this is what the basic uh, connectivity pattern that Purview uh, can have. There are multiple other uh, patterns Microsoft has defined, like when you have same subscription, when you have different virtual network, when you have different region, you can find it. Uh, they have really explained it really well. So you can find the links uh, in in uh, in the you know description of this video. Uh, you can get it more about it. Now the last part is the authentication and authorization. As the Purview is a PaaS service and it wants to interact with native services of Azure, there you can leverage the capabilities of managed identity. That means it's a passwordless interaction where uh, you know uh, Azure AD based uh, uh, interaction will uh, establish between your uh, Azure Purview and related PaaS services like you have your uh, SQL database or Cosmos DB. There, you know, your uh, Purview, uh, managed identity of the Purview will be created and with that managed identity your uh, a user will be created in your sql database or cosmos db and they can trust each other without a password that means via the azure ada th third party authentication uh, tool uh, third party authentication network they can uh, uh, trust each other that is the power of managed identity and if you have services which is outside azure world and you have to use the credential based integration where you have to store the password and the username then in that case, Azure Purview is also natively integrated with Key Vault, where you can store the credential in the Key Vault and Purview will retrieve the credential from the Key Vault and it will interact with the services. So this is how you can, uh, and also you can do the service principle based authentication where you can create a service principle and use the uh, uh, service principle credential and store it in the Key Vault and from there also your Azure Purview can retrieve it and interact with the respective services. So these are all basic Fundamentals of Azure Purview that uh, I have captured from the Purview portal. It, this is one of the finest service I can say where uh, you know you can you can learn a lot about data governance and lot of capabilities that Purview is providing. If you want to know more about it, then go through these links and you will find lot of information about network security best practices and all. Uh, if you like the video, then don't forget to subscribe our channel and uh, yeah, thanks a lot uh, for watching it and uh, yeah, thank you.